In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, sisters and brothers, to this, the feast day for St. Peter and St. Paul. Rumor has it we're celebrating something else today as well, so I'm delighted that you're here, and uh, we hope we'll see you after we're going to gather for some sustenance and maybe a speech or two. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. We are attentive to the word of God proclaimed. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased some people, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and the light shone in the, in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. Then the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane when suddenly the angel left him. 
Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all the people we're expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. The Lord set me free from all my fears. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor one called, and the Lord heard, and saved that person from every trouble. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The second reading, a reading from 2 Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The words of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, 
but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the years, my faith has been confirmed and deepened when I've had the humility and the good sense to recognize the hand of God in the ordinary events of daily life. Now, of course, some people might say these occurrences are simply coincidences. But then, you know, there's that old saying, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Others might suggest that God has much more important things to do than to get involved with the fiddly details of my daily life. My goodness, what a shriveled and anthropomorphic image of God. Besides, as St. Augustine reminds us, God loves each of us as if, there's, as if there were only one of us. So why am I telling you all this? Well, it's because the date of this farewell mass was a topic of discussion among the rector and Eliudi and Miles and me over a period of several weeks. At one point, I suggested June 10th because, well, that's the anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood. But I didn't have strong feelings about the matter one way or the other. And finally, Eliudi came to me and asked what I thought about today, Wednesday, June 29th, as a suitable day for a farewell Mass. And I said yes right away, not realizing that today of all days was the feast day of St. Peter and St. Paul. And what a wonderful thing when you think about it. What a wonderful thing to be able to celebrate my relatively small contribution to the advancement of our great faith while remembering the faith of our mothers and fathers, especially the faith of these two great fathers of the church, St. Peter and St. Paul. It's a wonderful thing, first of all, because it allows us to celebrate a feast day mass, not a regular weekday mass, but a feast day mass at which we not only say the Gloria, but we will profess our faith, the faith of our fathers and mothers. We will stand and say the Apostles' Creed. It's also a wonderful thing because unlike most weekday Masses, we will read the Epistle, as I did a moment ago. And sisters and brothers, what an amazing Epistle that was. I first suspected that God might have had something to do with the timing of this farewell Mass when I first laid eyes on the reading from 2 Timothy, and I read those words, Beloved, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now, of course, when St. Paul wrote these words, he had just endured a terrible time in prison and was facing his own death. Trust me, my time at St. Paul's College did not feel like a prison sentence. And even though these retirement things can sometimes look an awful lot like a funeral, I'm hoping that my death is still quite a few years away. And yet, I can't imagine more perfect words to describe how I feel about the ending of my time here. I've been poured out 
like a libation because that's the nature of priestly ministry. Properly understood, it's always a sacrifice. It's always an offering of oneself to the people one has been called upon to serve. To be sure, the libation is contained in a clay vessel and because of one's own humanity and sinfulness, the offering is seldom pure. But despite my flaws and my mistakes, I trust that overall, my love for the St. Paul's College community has allowed me in some way to impart the beauty of our Catholic faith to the many people I've encountered over these last three years, especially our students and our Sunday Mass community. The time of my departure has come. As the time is drawing near, I gotta tell you, I've been having second thoughts. But just as I was called by God to come and serve the people of God in this place, I'm now being called to retirement and a different kind of priestly service. My departure doesn't mean the end of priestly service. As I said in the homily last Sunday, retirement isn't about discontinuing my service to God or worse yet, ignoring the plight of those who might need a priest for one reason or another. It's discerning about what our Lord has in mind for me as I continue a journey that will last until the end of my days. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I think that's just another way of saying that most of the time I did what I thought God wanted me to do. I did what I thought was right. And no effective ministry can be done without creating some conflict. Jesus faced lots of it. So did St. Peter and St. Paul, and so will we if we do what Christ is asking us to do. But as St. Paul reminds us, it's a good fight. It's a good fight because it's rooted in love. Love for others, those with whom we're fighting, and love for a faith that must be upheld even when its demands put us in conflict with the world around us. So I pray that I have kept the faith. And I finished the race, at least this leg of it. I'm glad my time here at St. Paul's College is coming to an end on a day when we're asked to remember these two great saints of our church, especially the one after whom this college has been named. It helps to put everything in perspective, remembering those two, and to recognize that none of us is indispensable. As I said in Sunday's homily, sooner or later, we will all have to face the fact that our lives will end and the world will carry on without us. Whatever good we've done in this lifetime, whatever contribution we've made to the advancement of the kingdom of God, whatever successes and failures we've had along the way, we're all a small part of something much bigger, something that is ultimately in God's hands, something that will continue long after we've left this world. To paraphrase an old saying, faith is about planting trees knowing that you may never sit under their shade. And there's a certain relief that comes when you acknowledge that saving the world isn't all up to you. And so we celebrate this Eucharist today as a part of something bigger than ourselves, as a part of a great faith that has been passed on from one generation to another, that us gratefully received what has been passed on to us by St. Peter, by St. Paul, by Father Michael Korolev by Dr. Modi Shojania, and by many other faithful servants who have gone before. It is a living faith entrusted to us by a loving God. And it brings with it not only the freedom and grace to live in God's glory, but a commission to live that faith fully and then pass it on. Thanks be to God.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, <coughs> died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As heirs to the great faith of our ancestors, we make our prayers for the world we have been called upon to serve. For the Church, that it may courageously preserve and protect the saving truth of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, that they may never lose sight of their own humanity or the humanity of the people they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus and a safe return to life in all its fullness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of St. Paul's College, as the academic year draws to a close, that everyone will enjoy a safe and restful summer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Colin, as he prepares for retirement, that God will continue to guide and strengthen him. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who mourn, that the presence of the risen Lord may bring them peace and comfort. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they may share in the risen life of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. We offer these prayers to you, O God, in the silent prayers of our hearts, knowing that you, in your mercy, will hear and answer them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you, O Lord. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace with a simple bow. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Eliudi, are there, do we have any announcements? <laughs> no, we're good to go. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.